Hello everyone and welcome to my bathroom. I don't typically record videos in here, but this is not my typical video. Now you may have seen me in here if you watch my vlogs, but I don't really do my sit down videos in here. But today, as you've seen from the title, I'm doing my cat picks my makeup video. And Duncan is in here with me right now, so if you see curtains moving or hear noises, that's because he's just dying to be part of the video. I'm recording this on my vlog camera because I thought that would be easier, seeing as I'm in a little bit more of a confined space, and I did not think I could fit my large camera in here. I recorded the portion with Duncan previously because it ended up taking forever for him to choose what makeup I should use. But he did, and I will put those in the video as we go through it. And so I'm going to be applying makeup for you today. I haven't really done this. I am not a makeup artist. I am not an expert in makeup in any way. I thought that this would be a fun video and a good way to kind of get me into applying makeup on camera. And like I said, I'm not an expert, so I could be doing techniques wrong. I don't know the proper brushes to use, so please don't go into this thinking that I'm trying to teach you anything or that I am an expert on the subject in any way. It's just for fun, a fun and different video to kind of branch out on my channel a little bit and do something a little bit different. But that is a long enough introduction. So now let's get into the makeup. Starting off with concealer. The choices were the First Aid Beauty Avocado Bendy Concealer and the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. What do you like? Duncan chose the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. He must know it's my favorite. But I'm also going to be applying the Urban Decay Naked Skin Color Correcting Fluid because I would do this with either concealer. I put this on first to cancel out dark circles. And then I will go over it with the concealer. The one thing that's a little bit different about me doing it now then when I apply makeup in the morning is that I don't have any of my moisturizers on because I it is a Thursday evening and I washed off my everyday makeup and so I have a clean face but I didn't put any of my moisturizers back on so that would be the only difference from when I normally apply makeup so hopefully it won't cause much of an issue. I'm also not used to doing it on camera and I don't have a big mirror set up or anything like some people do so it's definitely gonna be different. Then I just go in with my mini beauty blender. I apologize none of them are super clean right now. as well without an under eye moisturizer but hopefully it'll all blend in. I also don't do my application in the same order as a lot of people. A lot of people do their eyes first and then apply their foundation which makes sense because if your eyes give you any fallout then it will fall all over your foundation, which has happened to me. But I also tried it the opposite way and it really didn't work for me. So, let me just do what works for myself. It's taking longer to blend than usual. It's as good as we're gonna get. On camera, it doesn't even look like it did anything. So, hopefully the foundation will work. 
So now for primer, he had a number of choices, which I hopefully tell you in the other clip. Good job. Good job, Duncan. He ended up choosing the Too Faced Hangover RX primer. And I don't believe I've tried this one yet, so this will be a new experience. And it says it has coconut, ooh, way too much just came out, but it says it has coconut water probiotic based ingredients. Duncan saying hello. You want to get out? Don't know how I feel about the smell of this one. I'm going to take any excess and put it on my neck area. So the primer feels nice, but I'm not digging the smell. I can't explain it. It's not a strong smell, but maybe it's the coconut water. It just doesn't smell good to me. So next, Duncan chose foundation, and I don't have a lot of foundations to choose from because I have the Too Faced Sweet Peach, which is one of my favorites, the Wet n Wild that I've been trying out, but I don't know if I love on my skin, and this sample size I got from Sephora of the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. Which one? You like this one, this one, or this one? Do you want this one, this one, or this one? Good boy! Which is the one he ended up choosing. Don't believe I've used it on my skin yet, so... Let's hope Sephora gave me a good color match, otherwise this could go horribly. All right, so what I usually do when applying foundation is put it on my face, then dab it in with my beauty blender. I have the L'Oreal, or beauty sponge. I have the L'Oreal beauty sponge that I've been using lately and I like the way that it works. So, but the reason I don't just put the product on the sponge is because I feel like the sponge is going to absorb a lot of the product and then you're wasting a lot of product. So that's why I put what I need on my face first, then dab it in with the sponge and it can take any excess off my face. And then I go in with more if need be. So we will see how this one works out. But I also put it on my neck, sometimes my chest, depending on the color but definitely my neck because you don't want to have your face be all foundation color and then have, in the case of me, a pasty white neck because it won't look right. All right, so hopefully that's close enough for you to see what I'm doing. I know people like you to get in close when you're doing makeup, but this is definitely a challenge, so we will see how it goes. I always get a little bit freaked out at first when I apply stuff because it's like, whoa, that is way different color than my skin. But then once you blend it, it doesn't look so dramatic. It's just that first application that can be a little scary. So as far as I can tell in this lighting, that's blended on my neck, but I'm getting a lot of shadow from this angle, so we will see. Now for the face. And I honestly don't know if this is supposed to be a full coverage, medium coverage, but maybe when I'm editing, I'll look that up for you and let you know the what Makeup Forever says as far as the coverage. So far it's actually, oh, so far it's actually applying 
quite nicely and sorry if I sometimes cut myself off but I'm having to also look in the mirror because make sure things are going okay. Can't forget to get those eyelids either because they have to match too. And now we blend and blend and blend. So since the primer and the foundation are both things I haven't used before, it's gonna be hard to say which is working really well because this seems this foundation seems to be applying quite well, but I don't know if that's also in conjunction with the primer. Now, that does not seem like it's giving a lot of coverage for me just yet. So I think I will put another layer on and see how that goes. So far, I'm thinking this is not a full coverage. Light to medium coverage, I'm thinking, because it's about the same Maybe even a little bit less than my Too Faced one. But it does blend in really nicely. It's looking awful here on camera, but it's looking not so bad in the mirror. So, again, we'll see what happens with the finished product. After looking in the mirror closer up, I'm thinking the No Moisturizer was probably not a good choice. But again, this is the first time that I'm doing this, so it's a little bit of an experiment. So I thank you for going on the journey with me. I think that's pretty well blended. So next up is brows, and I did not have Duncan choose any brow products because I only have two, one pencil and one gel. So there was nothing really for him to choose. So I have my trusty spoolie brush. The pencil I've been using lately is the Maybelline Total Temptation pencil and I have it in medium brown. And I really like it. It's a little bit of a wider pencil. Makes getting in there and applying things pretty quick and easy. I basically just fill in the sparse areas that I have with this. Then once I've kind of filled in the sparse areas, I go over it with my Wet n Wild Brow Mascara. I also find this really easy to use and it's quite affordable. And I'm not one for like super dramatic brows. I like them a little bit more on the natural side, so this works really well for me. Kind of makes them look a bit more groomed, but also nothing too dramatic. I have to say, doing this on camera is way more challenging. I have to make sure I'm getting it in camera and that I'm not making a horrible mess. So then I usually just go back over to kind of with my spoolie to kind of smooth it all out. So now for the eyes, I gave Duncan a choice of the majority of my eyeshadow palettes and he took quite a long time to make a decision. The Huda Beauty Amethyst. Disney Designer from ColourPop, the original Urban Decay Naked, Too Faced Chocolate Bonbon, bon, ColourPop and Zoella Brunch Date, and my newest, which is the Anastasia Riviera. Which one? Which one was it? This one I think you looked at first. Good boy! But he ended up choosing 
an oldie but a goodie. In fact, I think it was one of my first eyeshadow palettes that I ever got, and definitely my first high-end eyeshadow palette, or I'd say high-end. Some people might call it more middle of the road, but I would say it's high-end. And that's the original Urban Decay Naked. And they do not make this anymore, but you might be able to find it online somewhere. But they've also come out with the new Urban Decay Naked Reloaded, which is similar if you were looking for something like this. So it's basically a lot of neutrals. It's got some mattes and shimmers. And this is what Duncan chose, so we're going to play around. I am going to use eyeshadow primer because... With this one, it just goes on better and then they don't get as much fallout. And the one I use is again from Wet n Wild and it's their Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer. It does the trick well and again, it's affordable. So you can see it's just kind of like a nude color, kind of a cream formula. Pat that on my eyelids, make sure it's nice and smooth and blended. And I try not to put too much because I just kind of want it as a base and that way it doesn't get too sticky. So now i got to figure out what I want to do for the eyes. I do have fun playing around with the eyes because it's the one place I get to be creative and try out new looks. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And I do use this brush that came with the palette as well as others, but some people don't like these brushes. I don't mind it. I think it works fine, but, but I think I'm going to start out with Naked as a base. It's just this neutral tan color here. And I typically tap off my brush to get off any excess that might be on there because I figure it's just going to come off on my face anyway, so... I'm gonna have to zoom you out a bit more because there's no way I can do this so zoomed in and not totally scroll. This is definitely sticking to the primer. That's good because we're getting a good base down to make everything stay in place. Don't know if you'll even be able to see it on here because it's blending in with my skin pretty well. I would not wear this alone. All right, so got a base down. Now, what do I want to do? Can't talk too much. My battery's starting to go down. Gotta go quicker. But I think next I'm gonna use Half Baked, which is this golden color here. And I'm gonna go all over the eye with that. Way harder applying makeup on camera, no doubt about it. I'm not feeling as comfortable as normal. So interesting now using this palette after having used some of my other newer ones because it's not blending as well as I remember. I don't know if that's because it's getting old or because I've been using new formulas. Not sure. Try to apply a little more of the gold, see how that goes. I find the trick with shadow is just blend, 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 blend. Something I've been enjoying doing lately is kind of putting a little bit of a different color in the inner corner. So I'm going to use one of my faves from this palette, this Sin color. Will it show up over the gold, though? That is the ultimate question. Yeah, I'm thinking it's not going to show up great over that gold, but... Don't know if that'll show up, but that's what the shadow's looking like. It's definitely a more neutral look. Next, we have highlights. Next up is highlights, and I only have two to choose from because 
just don't have a lot open right now. One is this City Color Highlighter Trio. So if he picks this, I could pick from any one of the three colors. And the other choice is the Zoella ColourPop Swipe Right Highlighter. chose was from the Zoella Colourpop brunch collection in the Swipe Right highlighter and to apply highlighter I just used this fan brush from Real Techniques. It's got a pretty pink sparkly handle and I do really enjoy this Zoella Colourpop Swipe Right uh, highlighter. I honestly don't know if it would show up on all skin tones, but it shows up pretty well on mine. Don't know why my left cheek is all red, but it is. I usually just apply a highlight to my cheekbones and accentuate them. Hmm, I don't know what that redness is, but then for blush, he had a few blushes to choose from. The choices are the Sephora cream blush or cheek stain. Another cream blush and the label's worn off, but this is from Bella Pierre Cosmetics. Zoella ColourPop Soulmate. And Tarte Parte. Which blush do you want? Come here. went with the Zoella ColourPop collection and the blush from that and I've also been really liking this blush and really like it as a combination with the highlighter they pair really nicely together I often use my hand to kind of blend in after the brush Seems to work out pretty well for me, but there you go, there's that. And what else did Duncan choose? Eyeliner. And I think eyeliner took him the longest. I thought it would be the easiest because they roll and I thought that would get his attention, but no. It was the one that pretty much took the longest. Next up are eyeliners. There's one from Marc Jacobs, one from Lancome, one from Sephora that's purple instead of black. And the Zoella ColourPop Gel Liner. Twenty minutes later. Good boy! But he ended up again choosing Zoella Colourpop. Again, apparently he's a fan of that line. And this is their cream gel liner in XOXO. This could be tricky on camera. I will do my best. 
Oh no, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Why is it so far out? It does not seem, oh there we go, that's a little better. It was way too far out and then only went out farther. It's pretty intense. More intense than I was expecting. And you all know, I can't do top la, I mean a uh, water la, uh, tight line. I can only do my water line here. And a little too heavy on the right eye. Well, from far away, hopefully it won't be that intense. Then I'm going in with mascara. Duncan did not pick one because I only really use one at a time. And I've been using the Maybelline Lash Sensational. And I wasn't sure how I felt about it at first, but I think it's one of those that you have to let it dry out a little bit first. And then I liked it better once it dried out a little bit. Has that Kirby wand. And I did already have mascara on today, so my lashes are not in top form. Then I use my handy dandy combing brush here to separate them after the fact, but because I already had some on, they're going to be a little on the clumpy side. I'm going to do my bottom lash as well, which I don't do on an everyday basis because I get concerned about mess and it getting black under my eyes. But when I'm doing a video and makeup, especially when I have eyeliner on the bottom, you gotta get those bottom lashes. And hopefully this is in focus when I'm doing these things because otherwise we got a problem. Now at this point I did things a little bit out of order and I had Duncan choose my makeup setting spray next and it was between the Urban Decay All Nighter and the Flower Beauty Seal the Deal Matte Finish. Over here, bud. Pick one. Good boy. And he chose the Flower Beauty. Not my favorite. I'm going to use it until it's empty, but it's not my favorite because for some reason when it sprays, it doesn't spray completely smooth and gets like these white dots on your face. So that's not helpful when you've just done a makeup look. But I wanted to tell you that because next would be lips. And at this point, Duncan had had it. He did not want to choose any more makeup. Said, what do I know about lips? So I had to use my own lipstick. So I tried to choose a newer one that hopefully is still available. It's a Sephora one. No, it's not a Sephora. It's a Bite Beauty one and it's in the color Rhubarb. I really like the other Bite Beauty lipstick that I have and I haven't tried this color out yet. So it's going to be the first time. So we'll see how that goes. Ooh darker on the lips than I expected. Smells nice. Kind of fruity. So yeah, still has that good Urban Decay formula, but a new color. A little dark for this time of year, but wanted to try it out. Goes fine with the neutral looking eye, I think. Now, typically at this point, I would apply powder to set my under eyes. And to do that, I would use the Laura Mercier translucent powder. That's what I have and enjoy right now to set my under eyes. But I don't think they're gonna need setting. And same goes for face powder. I typically go in with the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores powder to set my makeup, but 
I'm already looking on the matte side and not shiny like I normally do, so I don't think that's necessary. So I guess it's just time to spray. Didn't hit my face at all. So this one is quite scented, and what it is about it, oh, I just inhaled it, oh. And what it is about it is, it's a ni it seems like a nice fine mist, but unless you hold it up close to your face, it doesn't get on your face. And then when you hold it closer, you feel those big droplets go on, so. I don't think I'll be getting it again once it's used up. All right, so here is the finished look. This is what Duncan picked out for my makeup. I think he did a good job and it was a good balance. It wasn't anything wild or crazy. So if you would like to see more videos like this, then definitely let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I had a lot of fun doing it, a lot more than I expected. Well, it's definitely a challenge and I'll have some learning and figuring out to do for future videos. It's always a growing process and I definitely had more fun doing it than I thought I would. I would love to do it again if you'd be interested. So let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this where I do my makeup on camera. I would love your feedback. So this is what it's looking like in a little bit different lighting. Maybe this looks a little bit different than upstairs? Don't know. But thank you for watching and bearing with me as I try out something new. I really appreciate it. And I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.